Yo, what is going on? So, one of the questions I get asked most often is, can you have alcohol, so can you go out on the lash and still achieve your body shape goals? Now, on this, the first thing I will say, if you want to achieve any sort of form of real physique goals, whether that be like shred, like cutting weight, build muscle, anything, you can enjoy alcohol, obviously in moderation, like everything. If you're going to go out on the lash and get absolutely pickled, it is going to delay progress. Please put your hands together for Quite simple, that's just what it is. It's just gonna slow down your time to get into where you wanna go, quite simply. But at the same time, like I said, you can still have drinks and make significant improvements. And don't get wrong, if you've got like um, unbelievable genetics, that's gonna really help as well. Anyway, so firstly, let's just kind of go into the details of what alcohol is. So quite simply, when you look at the actual calories of alcohol, um, it is very calorific. So you get seven calories per gram. Obviously, protein and carbs are four calories per gram. Obviously, fats are nine calories per gram. And alcohol is seven. And now that's not including obviously the amount of like added sugars and all these other things that get added into drinks. So if you're having, say, like a vodka coke, if that is like full fat or full sugar coke then you need to add in all the extra calories that that coke is bringing in or like when you look at some of these cocktails that are just like full of sugar syrup and this that and the other, all these juices and all these sorts of things some of those cocktails can be significantly um, calorific due to all the added calories from obviously the um, little additional substitutes that you put in there. Now, secondly, moving on from that, it's recovery. One of the biggest things about alcohol is it just smashes your recovery. Now, obviously, you totally understand this by the hangover that you get the next day. That hangover is your body trying to recover. It's trying to get rid and dispel, obviously, all the alcohol. Because alcohol, quite simply, it is a toxin. And so, when you drink alcohol, your body creates, or when it's getting digested, your body then um, gets turns it into acetaldehyde. And your body is like, this is this will kill me. I need to get this out of my body asap. So your body prioritizes getting rid of that. But one of the biggest things as well about that is when you drink. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you're just like, ah, like you feel like even if you had like a fairly good night's sleep. You still feel like you've had no sleep at all. I get this all the time. Whenever I drink, I can never really sleep properly. And that's because alcohol stops your body going into REM sleep. It actually stops your body being able to go into that deep restful sleep, that rapid eye movement sleep, which is when you come and you dream, which is when your body really starts to recharge its proverbial batteries. So alcohol actually stops your body being able to get into that sleep so that is one of the reasons why the next day it takes you a couple of days especially to get older it takes you a couple of days to actually recover from big sessions is because it, your body is not actually able to get that sleep recovery that it required to make you feel better essentially it's going back to it when you when you start looking at fat loss obviously this, this is coming to the biggest factors of alcohol now these are the main things that kind of we look at. So firstly, fat loss. So yeah, like I said, your body creates, when you drink alcohol, turns that into acetaldehyde, which your body's just like, this needs to get out of my system ASAP. And so whilst you're trying to get that out of your system, anything that you eat on top of that, so if you've got out and had a pizza, you've got out and you've had whatever you've had to eat, you had your nuts if you're sitting at a pub or something, your body will literally put that straight onto the back burner, which means your body is gonna store that as fat. Therefore, 
you need to actually be quite conscious of the foods you eat if you're gonna go out on the lash because the body is in a higher likelihood of storing more fat. So again, when fat, if fat loss is your goal, this is why you need to be very conscious about actually going out and drinking. Not only because obviously the calorie um, influx that when you go out and have a natural session in, like incorporates into your diet, obviously you've got an awful lot of calories you need to try and factor in, but it's also because when you do drink alcohol, your body will literally go into almost like storage mode. It will just put everything to the back burner because it's so focused on getting rid of this toxin, getting this body, this toxin, sorry, out of your body. And secondly, when you're looking at fat loss, it's your inhibitions. <laughs> your self-discipline, your willpower, they just smoke bomb, but they go away. So before you have a drink, and be like, oh, no, I'm not going to go and get a kebab, I'm not going to go and get a pizza, that's just not conducive to me getting to my goals. You have a few beers and you're like, oh, I'll take that pizza, yeah, you sprinkle a bit of kebab meat on my pizza, fucking bit of garlic mayo, bit of this, bit of that, you know. Yeah, we'll have cheese, um, we'll have cheese, we'll have chips, a bit of cheese, go on for some bag of sauce, and that before you know it, you've just consumed about an extra three or four thousand calories. Again, <laughs> it's one of those ones, you wake up in the morning, you're like, ah, well, that's a massive spanner in the works. And it is, because when you look at, obviously, fat loss as a whole, you're just looking at, over the course of a week, maintaining your consistent calorie deficit. And if you're taking in, like, three, an extra three, four, five thousand calories in one weekend from alcohol and then pizza and then whatever you end up on kebabs and all this sort of stuff and then not only that it's what you end up doing the next day on the hangover day because obviously a lot of people would just be lying there feeling sorry for themselves and be like I need some good food to make me feel better yeah because that makes a lot of sense eating shit food when you feel terrible but uh, it's like comfort food isn't it and comfort food tends to be very calorie dense and so as a result again just ramping up those calories so yeah Monday to Thursday you may have put yourself in a good calorie deficit but then that weekend you've overspilled you've overconsumed to the point where you're in a massive surplus where you're gonna put on a huge amount of, of well I say a huge amount but you will then be more, most likely putting on weight and that will also if you want to get back to it being in a fat loss phase again you're then going to have to work extra hard and go even deeper into a calorie deficit in order to negate the amount of calories that you've consumed and over that weekend or over that little period of time where you've just gone on a lash and then including that, um, what do you call it, that little hangover day where you've just been eating that pure sympathy. Sympathy for yourself as well. Because ain't no one got sympathy for you. Um, <laughs> Don't know why I did that. But, so, obviously, if you're not looking at fat loss and you're looking at muscle building, again, so, before actually I say any of these points, one thing you have to understand is, yeah, people will be like, oh, okay, yeah, but I'm trying to build muscle, so I need to be in a calorie surplus. Yes, you do, but at the same time, alcohol is like negative calories. It's not good calories. It's not the sort of calories that you're going to consume and that's, your body's going to turn that into useful the building blocks to build muscle like alcohol can't actually get transferred and help stimulate like muscle protein synthesis it's not going to help you build muscle it's not going to help that hypertrophy of the muscle it it doesn't have anything useful in it it's just negative calories it's just bad for you so there's nothing positive actually comes out of that from a muscle building standpoint so when you actually look at this as well so Alcohol increases protein breakdown, like muscle protein breakdown, which means it helps, you, it makes your body utilize more muscle for energy. And then secondly, and it suppresses your muscle protein synthesis, which is your body's actual ability to digest food and turn that into the building blocks of your muscle. So again, by drinking more, it's just suppressing. I'm not saying it just totally into their gates and stops all happening and you're just gonna have a few beers and you're gonna look like Gollum running around all scrawny and shit. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is it just suppresses it, so it just slows it down. So it's like I say with regards to getting to your goal, 
if you're going to take on like big sessions and stuff, it will just slow down your progress. That's all it's doing. And again, this isn't if you're like going on like, 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 been like drinking a lot. Like if you're having like a, a glass of wine at dinner or do you know what I mean? you're going out for like one pint with the lads on the footballs or something, don't worry about it. Do you know what I mean? It's just moderation. It's, it's again, it's dangers in the dose. Like everything, danger is in the dose. And it decreases testosterone production. And as you know, testosterone is one of the key drivers in increasing muscle size and that building muscle. Hence why people take steroids because that fires up your testosterone production. So look, as I just said, danger is in the dose here. So like the key take homes, if you want to go and have a drink, have a drink, it's literally, it's all about like moderation. If you want to have a glass of wine with your partner at dinner, yeah, it's fine. It's not going to, this stuff's not really going to come into, con um, into consideration there. Like I said, this is only when you're going out on absolute binges, or absolute, like going out on the lash, it's your friend's birthday or something, you're going out, you're going to get wild. So, for those times, if you know you've got a big event coming up in like the weekend or something, then look, one of the biggest things I'd say for, if... Fat loss especially is your goal, and even muscle building is, make sure you hit your protein target before you go out. Because if you are going to go out and eat, most likely it's going to be pretty crappy food, that just tends to be the case if you go to the pub or something. But what I just say is just cover your protein and save your carbs and fats for booze. So if you are going to go out on the lash and say if you are looking for fat loss, then you want to make sure that you can just stay with as close to or inside your um, <coughs> your calorie deficit, your calorie amount as possible. So again, just save up your save up your space for booze by minimising your carbs and fat. So yeah, it might sound a bit shit. It might be literally be a case of having like chicken and green veg stir fries or chicken salad sort of things or like lean meat salad, lean meat stir fries. But as I said, just save your calories and stuff for that night, that day, whatever it's going to be. Um, minimize your high calorie drinks. It's quite an easy one, that. So, then like super sugary cocktails, all that sort of stuff, like Jaeger bombs, this stuff, or if you're going to have a Jaeger bomb, which are for like sugar free Red Bull, stuff like that. Like, those little things can make a massive difference. When you're going out, if you're having like spirit and mixes, make sure your mixes are diet mixes. Again, it might sound a bit anal, but those little things make a massive difference, especially if you're going out and you're having five plus drinks, because that adds up. Every single, if you're saving 100 calories on 10 drinks, that's a thousand calories, do you know what I mean? It really does start to add up, especially when you start looking at the volume of drinks you're gonna be having. So one thing I would say is that. And so, if you're going to like a party, try and take a measurer, like, for, for um, spirits and stuff, so you can actually measure out the drinks. Again, it will stop you getting absolutely pickled because you know it's something you turn up to like a house party or something, you, you're just free pouring the spirits. After about three drinks, you're white girl, just like, ah! <laughs> so it will also help you save a bit of face and stop you just going like full retard. Um, but then also, from a calorie context, it's gonna really help like keeping those calories in check. And now also on that, or buy bottles. Buy bottles, whether that be Prosecco bottles, and try and try, try and like tape tape them out. So blow like, up oh, on this watch by then, and make sure you're drinking water alongside your alcoholic drinks as well. This will also help with your with your hangover. But just staying like positively hydrated with with like good quality liquids as well as obviously your booze. And buy buy bottles. What it also means like bottles of beer. If you like beers. Rather than getting pints, just get bottles because most of the time you're probably drinking it about the same time as your friends are drinking pints and you're saving yourself about like 100 odd calories or so per drink. And again, it all adds up. Like that old, is it Asda? It's like every little helps. Whatever that one was. But look, again, we're all human and we all live in society and part of society is drinking. So, yeah, I'm not expecting you to be like in some sort of monk and be like, I'm not doing anything, I'm not going to go to friends' birthdays, da da da. Like, you're not, unless you're like a physique competitor or you're like an athlete or there's a real 
the reason why you shouldn't and your goals are very very specific and set then I totally understand that. It was the same as me with boxing. I, would not, I wouldn't drink for eight weeks leading up to a fight. It's also because of how it made me feel like mentally. Like I perform so much better if I just avoid drinking. Um, but anyway, so that's one of the biggest things I would say there as well is just enjoy yourself. But again, it's just about moderation. The danger is in the dose. So that's probably the biggest take I might say is yeah you've got all these factors but these are only going to be if you're going out like an absolutely white girl if you're just going out for like a drink a couple of drinks you don't need to worry too much again it's all about the danger in the dose great story compelling and rich well that's going to do it for all of us here at channel 4 news you stay classy san diego